In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we celebrate one of the pillars of the church, Saint Kyriaki. Her righteous parents, Dorotheos and Yevsivia, although righteous and good, did not have children. And so they prayed that the Lord might grant them a child, and their prayer was answered. When their baby was born on Sunday, they decided to name her Kiriaki. For within the days of counting for the church, the first day of the week, Kiriaki, is the Lord's Day. And then each of the days after that are counted up as numbers, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, Friday the day of preparation, and then Saturday. Because she was a gift from God, they consecrated her unto him by naming her after his day, the Lord's day. And as she grew up, she was different from other children. She did not desire the things that they desired, but rather desired to be close to her parents. And instead of wanting the things of her youth or beauty, despite the fact that she was beautiful, she desired only to pray and draw closer and closer to Christ our God. Her parents urged her to get married, for they were very wealthy, and they wanted to bestow their wealth upon her and her children, children. But she had no desire for this, desiring only to be married to Christ her God. And she said repeatedly to them, my goal is to die a virgin unto Christ our God. Despite this desire, a local magistrate who had a son wanted her betrothed to him. But when he found out that she had dedicated herself to die a virgin, he was incensed and betrayed her parents and her to the local authorities that they were Christians. When they tried to convince her parents to renounce their faith, they found them to be Christian. And her parents said that we have been raised in the faith of our true God and we will not turn away from him. And despite manfully enduring tortures, her parents would not submit. Afterwards, they were sent away to be tortured further in another area and gave their lives by being beheaded. But with Saint Kiriaki, the local authority thought she was beautiful and therefore hopefully she could be turned. And they offered her many, many things, but she would not be swayed. Finally, they decided to torture her as they did with her parents. And the torturing was so fierce, they beat her so much that they had to go through three executioners because the first two became too tired from beating her. When they saw that they could not change her, the governor sent her to a man who was so bestial, so horrific, that he had a reputation of fearsomeness. But this too was not enough that she was hung by her hair for several hours, despite the fact that she was beaten with rods, stoned, cut up, she would not relent. And that night, the Lord appeared to her and said, I am with you, Kiriaki. And she was healed. When the torturer saw that she was healed, he said, the gods have smiled on your beauty. Come to the temple with me that I may show you that they have healed you so that you may give thanks. She said, yes, let us go to your temple. And when they entered the temple, she got down on her knees and the torturer was glad, thinking, ah, she is finally going to give honor to the gods. But she prayed to the Lord God that his power might be made manifest and the whole building shook. Instead of being turned to repentance, he uttered more blasphemies against God. And because of this, he was struck down by lightning. 
After this, he was sent to another torture. She was sent to another torturer. And this one decided to throw her into fire. But much like the three youths, she stood untouched because she was so full of the Holy Spirit and his flames that no earthly fire could touch her. Finally, after all these things, she was beheaded. She was in Christ. As we look to the things that we suffer in this world and the inconveniences that we think are so arduous, let us turn and think about the life of St. Kiriaki, who endured torture after torture after torture after torture, but never lost sight of her joy. It is said that even as she was being beaten, instead of screaming out in pain, she smiled because she was happy to be with her Lord. My beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not a person who was a masochist for pain, but a model and an icon for us to follow. Consecrated unto the Lord's day, raised by righteous parents, Saint model for us to follow. Let us also take up our cross as she did. Let us endure what the world throws at us, knowing that the Lord carries our troubles with us and will get us through to the other side that his glory and his love for us might be made manifest. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.